Same Freeform Radio on the Freeform Network. You can follow us at Facebook on the Freeform Network on Twitter, FFR Podcast. And remember to send your questions, suggestions, your bad intentions to free to ffnquestions at gmail.com. And I'll repeat that New Year, same problem. FFNQuestions at gmail.com. Everybody, it's Freeform Radio. We have Danny. Yes, sir. I survived the New Year's, man. One more year down. And we got uh, New Year's resolution. Andy here. Um, so I take it you had a, a good New Year's, right, Danny? I mean, it was pretty, I mean, it wasn't eventful or anything. Uh, I mean, compared to other people. But it was still a good one. Stayed home with the family. Uh, nothing too eventful or, or anything to really uh, shout out. But, yeah, got a chance to stay home with the family. Well, good. Um, I took it easy. I had a pretty easy New Year compared to years past. You know, uh, I'm, I'm an older gentleman. And, um, I, you know, this year I'm, I'm kind of dry for... When I'm, for you guys out there, uh, been on a health kick the last, I would say, about six months. And one of the things I, I've cut off, not cut off, but I haven't been doing, I haven't been drinking. So what goes with New Year's Eve is drinking, so I took it easy. Um, is that why you've been so crabby, since you haven't been drinking? Uh, or maybe. you took up smoking? Smoking, I think, would have relaxed me more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, you know, I, I've been uh, dry, like, uh, you know, how uh, Ro- Joe Rogan on this podcast, that they have that dry October or whatever. Uh, I took, I've been having it dry. It's improved uh, my health. But going for New Year's, I did, I was like, man, it's going to suck. I haven't, I usually drink an, ex- an excess in uh, New Year's Eve to, to welcome in the New Year. But just on New Year's? Man, just in general, I guess. But <laughs> you know, I, I was just like, man, what the fuck am I gonna do? But um, it was fun. I mean, I stayed up to twelve, and like by twelve, I live uh, by like twelve o five. I was in bed. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, Feliz Año Nuevo, Happy New Year. Shook some hands, hugged some in laws, and I told my wife, all right, let's roll. And came straight home and. Straight to bed. And I knocked out, I think by 12.15, I was knocked out. And next day, I woke up, and I was like, man, this is pretty sweet. I'm not hungover or nothing, and went to visit my mom's for a little bit. But you get to people watch. What I did was a lot of people watching, and um, I guess when you're drunk, you don't see as much craziness as you do as when you're sober because you get to see... uh, People really enjoy themselves. I, I guess it is the holiday. It, you know, it's Christmas and New Year's and Thanksgiving. You have to to drink to to enjoy being with your family. You know. Right, right. I I mean, I've spent uh, a few New Years with you, and I gotta say, I've spent a few where I don't even think you remember what happened that day. That's that's how much partying Andy would, used to do. But yeah, so so this year it was the the total opposite. You you got to see it through sober eyes and see everybody else acting a fool. Yeah, I got it to see it because uh, I'm not a fool, but man, I see like man, these people are really enjoying themselves, and I'm thinking like I'm I'm trying I'm fighting off not falling asleep, and um, so that's why I'm just like fuck, man. Would me drinking make this more enjoyable? And um, Needless to say, I, I think, uh, like I said, it was interesting. I don't, my biggest issue was staying awake. The older they get, the, the harder time I have staying awake, even till like midnight. Rarely do I stay past, uh, uh, um, pa- stay awake past midnight. And I know I sound like an old fucking man, but. I think those days are long gone. I might have, I had like uh, I had like these uh, chocolate liqueurs with like tequila whiskey. I did have one of those, but it got me kind of like eh, it wasn't the same. And I'm like, yeah, I had my fun. 
Yeah, I you know, I, I hate to make it sound like the, the old man podcast here, but I didn't even make it to Get off midnight. my lawn. I didn't I didn't even make it to midnight. Uh by like ten o'clock I think it was, I was uh nodding off and before you knew it, my head was on the pillow and I, I was dead asleep. Um, I did wake up for the uh, fireworks and what sounded like gunshots, but I was uh, a little too asleep to to really pay attention. I kind of nodded back off and celebrated the New Year's on my pillow. <laughs> so with that, you know, so we, we welcomed them the New Year and uh, we did a couple. I, we had the day off and uh, Today, I had some other issues were uh, not a great way to start the New Year's. I had some fraud charges on my uh, debit card. Was that um, part of your New Year's resolution, or what was your New Year's resolution? Um, if you really want me to, to sound as sappy, my re- New Year's resolution was to read uh, one book a month. Oh, shit. I know you were, uh, you were telling me some story. I don't even remember what story you were telling me. And then you go, yeah, and then I was reading my book as I was sitting there, and I was just like, holy shit, look at Andy, man, reading a book while everybody else is probably on their phones and tablets. Well, I, well, I do. I'm a man of uh, that has acquired taste and, and, and sophistication. Yeah. So uh, I, in this age of tablets and, and physical media disappearing, um. I was just like, man, I got some books I got to finish up. Like, I'm going to start finishing up these books. And um, I finished the book on uh, for the month of uh, January. You know, at the time of the recording, we're only in the second week of uh, January. I read this book. I finished up this book that I had on the shelf. I got like about three quarters of the way done on Area 51. It's history. And... Um, I got this other book. I'm gonna pick. Uh, I gonna. I'm like about halfway done, on uh, a fellow uh, internet um, darling. Uh, she's a YouTube creator. She's been on multiple shows and TVs. Uh, F- Felicia Day. She's uh, from the Guild. She wrote a memoir. I'm reading about it. She um, when she lands to Hollywood and she is. Uh, She's a very inspiring. I've met her at one of the conventions and kind of like we're doing here. She started from the bottom. She had some creative thoughts and and she's just giving her insight on her rise to creating content and this generation with streaming YouTube. And and uh, she's a big gamer. She loves computer games and she's just put in her two cents and and uh, I, I'm reading her memoir right now, and it's been pretty interesting to say the least. She she, I, she, she went to college like really young, and um, you know, so it, it's an interesting read. My goal is to read a book a month, and I got some books here, and I might just buy a couple. I'm, I'm a big autobiography and history fan, so I could read the, uh, you know, I could read that shit all day. Yeah, man. I think I'm going to join you, but I'm going to make it one comic book a month. How's or that sound? The other thing that, that could work, or the other thing is an audio book. You know, on YouTube, there's a lot of fucking free audio books. Um, but um, I don't know. I've never, re- I never really been a big audio book fan. I don't know about I know you've done it in the past, right, Danny? Yeah, yeah. I've done a few audio books. But yeah, uh, I mean, it, it really depends on the subject matter. Uh, I'm sure you, you're mind could trail off and i guess with any even book your mind could trail off and you, you kind of lose interest so definitely I has to probably be ADD, man <laughs> yeah definitely that's that's when I, I don't take my pill and my mind starts wandering but, but uh, yeah that's my goal i don't know what yours is you know i i you know i don't really make traditionally uh new year's resolutions uh and and like go, like proclaim it like this is what i want to do um, I kind of just try to be a better person every day of the year. You know what I'm saying, Andy? Uh, that might sound kind of corny, but you I... corny man, <laughs> be a better person. What you're saying, you're an asshole right now? <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> I, you know, I uh, sometimes I I do have to take a step back and and kind of like put look at myself from the outside and go. Man, am I being a jerk or an asshole or am I being a bad person right now? And I 
try to improve on those things. So um, this year, I, you know, along with that, with me just trying to improve myself every day, I, I, I did make a conscious decision to kind of get a little closer to my spirituality. Um, I think in this last year or so, I've kind of taken a, a lazy step back and uh, maybe not put the commitment that's needed to keep your spirit rich. Uh, so I, in this year, I'm hoping to become more of an active member, um, in, in my spirituality. So we'll see how that goes. And, uh, you know, that's about really the only thing, but nothing that I proclaimed to the skies and said, this is what I'm going to do this year. And this is what I'm going to accomplish. So just a couple of personal goals in myself to try to be a, a better person. For all you people, all our fans listening, send us what your New Year's resolutions, if you have any, at ffnquestions at gmail.com. But, uh, yeah, that, that's what we got going on. And like I said, one of um, <clears throat> we always want to start off the New Year right. And unfortunately for me, the, my New Year's went to the shit real quick with today. With Like I was getting into, the, I had some fraud charges on my uh, my debit card. And it's like always, it's like, what the fuck? And I've been trying to pinpoint it down where the fuck I think my shit got hacked. And it's, I think I kind of figured it out. I think it's somewhere in Scumberg. Uh oh. For Scumberg, also known as, the, originally known as Schomburg. And to me, I think I, I figured it. I'm pretty, I'm like about 95% sure it happened at that restaurant we went for my wife's birthday. So are you sure it was your card or can we blame this no, on your yeah. wife's card? So I left work early today because I called the bank and the bank's like, oh, we could issue a new card to you today if we go to one of our branches. So I left, they closed at five. So I left work about an hour early and I drove to my house and... Uh, yeah, I was, you know, I, I talked to the banker and, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm like, can you tell me what card it is? Oh yeah, not a problem. And she looked it up and of course it was the ones ending in my digits and I was like, damn it. So, and then I'm like, I started replaying everything the, the last couple weeks where I didn't have, where I didn't hand the card, the card over and I used the chip. And the only one in the last two weeks since New Year has been uh, the restaurant we went to. So I'm like debating if I should go fucking tell them like, fuck you guys, you know, give me something or just screw it. Just I'm thinking maybe for down the road or future purchases, I'm going to probably use the credit card now because this is uh, it's a fucking hassle. They made two charges. It totaled about about 170 bucks. And so now I got to file a bunch of paperwork to see to try to get some of this money back. Is it really paperwork or is it just electronic forms? That no, really she to... said uh, they're going to print out. She goes, you could do the 800 number, the email it to you or fax it to you. Or you could come back to the branch once the the charges have posted. And then they could help me fill it out and they could fax it for me there at, at the bank branch. Oh, okay. And my sister who worked at the bank for like. 15 plus years she kind of told me what's going to happen in the process but she goes you got to do it immediately because the longer you wait the um, the less and less chances you're going to be able to prove that it's fraudulent so they could do an investigation quickly oh cool now uh, you, you went to the branch like you said to try to take care of the issue it, once you found out that it was you, were you disappointed that you couldn't yell at your wife, or or what was the game plan if it was your <laughs> yeah, wife? Yeah, yeah, because she she got upset at me. She's always busting my balls, like you need to use the credit card at the gas station and all that. And I'm like, me being in our culture, then you know, like don't tell me what to do, woman. And sure enough, that came and bit me in the ass. And now I'm like, uh, like we always say, she won up me. So now I got to walk around with my the tail between my legs here and my head down, man, because, like, she got that upper hand on me right now. Damn. You know, I, I do try to make it uh, a conscious effort that if, like, I'm at the mall and there's, like, a kiosk guy in the middle, I do try to use my credit card, the one with, uh, like, the lowest interest or the lowest um, limit, just in case some guy does steal it and go crazy on it. Uh, they'll only be able to steal like 500 bucks out of it. But 
usually for like if I'm at a restaurant or whatever, I like to pay with my debit card because I don't want to pay interest on a credit card uh, for charging something, you know, for charging a forty, fifty dollar meal, and then having to pay five bucks on interest because you know I decided uh, money was taken you know, that month and you can right, no right, game. right. So I I do tend to like you. I tend to use my debit card for for purchases regularly, and I only use uh, this credit card, uh, you know, for places that kind of look a little shady, and even if it looks like super shady. Then I I look for an ATM so I could take out some money, but well, I usually don't carry too much. Well, you know that's the thing, Danny. I've always been a big proponent. I actually like grab when I go to an ATM or I go to a gas station. I grab the front where you put the card in to see if there's not like some lookalike thing that just comes right apart with like a right, scanner. Right. I'm, yeah, I'm paranoid like that. I always been like on top because I'm like I don't want this shit to happen. On the streets. And, yeah, man, and then this shit that happened, and I remember because, you know, I'm like, that's the only fucking time I didn't get to see what they did with the card. And yeah, so I, I'm pinpointing it. I think your it pass to, is going to be revoked, man. Hell no, nah, man. I'm going to go over there. You know, fuck that. I'm going to go over there fucking tomorrow during lunch. Tell me what the fuck's going on up in here, man. Some bullshit. And I'm going to have to fuck them up and get some gift cards or some shit out of them so was this place was it a a good establishment or was this a yeah more it, a was a, it was a it was a due to legality i'm not gonna say the name but oh, it's not man. a hole a hole in the wall and it's uh it's a big chain um it's a sit-in and i'm gonna tell you uh it's known for uh it's uh, we're in Chicago, and they're known for their uh, deep dish pizza. So that you should be able to narrow it down from like the three or four chains around here. But it ain't no Pequots, right? Nah, the Pequots wouldn't do that to me, man. <laughs> the only thing about Pequots is that it's uh, it's great, but you gotta fucking wait, and it's uh, it's just it's a mob scene, man. That's the only turn off. Like you gotta wait forever. Right. I think to any get to kind of seat. I think any place, uh, other than Little Caesars, you just walk into Little Caesars and grab the, the crappy pizza they got. But yeah, uh, any kind of good pizza place, you're, you're going to wait a minute. Um, and kind of an update on uh, my Pequots thing, man, I still haven't been able to get my wife convinced to go back and give it another try ever since they screwed Junior the last time I went last year. <laughs> my wife, who loves deep dish pizza... And when we were dating, I took her the one once. She was not impressed. Man, and I'm blasphemy. Like, and I married this woman. And she just goes, she goes, I don't understand what your guys' infatuation is with this pizza. What about uh, Maxwell's? Is she down with Maxwell's? Nah, she she she's down with like um like Italian beefs. She likes a good gyro. I mean, we like to eat, but like I said, it's uh. She thinks Pequods is nothing special, and all we, the only reason we know about Pequods is because of Dave and his wife. So, and to me, like just when you got what it is now, where it came from, I mean, it's still there. It's just it was popular then. Now it's like it's been on TV shows and all this other shit. So now it's becoming like a destination thing, and it's gonna get. Um, I don't know where how far they're gonna go, but it's when you go there after lunch, like between like three to dinner, it's fucking crazy. Even when you go early, late, early evening, it's still fucking crazy. And now because of this podcast, it's gonna go atomic way. Yeah, that is gonna be a universal man. It's gonna they're gonna blast it off, and they're gonna have some fucking shit on the moon or the <laughs> on Mars. <laughs> right, but, right. Um, so that's what we got. I got beat by some fucking scammer, but. Uh, Danny says here you beat uh, another uh, game. I'm assuming on the PS4. Tell us all about that. And uh, I didn't even know this lady was still around. I thought she was done. Yeah, yeah. the The game that I beat was uh, a Tomb Raider game, the latest one, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. It was one of the what's one of the games that I picked up during uh, the Black Friday. I think it was like 15 bucks. So those are usually right up my alley. Uh, these bargain bin games, but yeah, I ended up beating the the game. 
it was not entirely too memorable, uh, to be quite honest with you. It was the kind of thing that it was more of the same, um, more of the same tombs, more of the same exploring. Uh, graphics were a little tighter. Um, I don't have anything really bad to say about it. It was just more of the same, and there was nothing that really went like, wow, this really took a huge step forward. So in that aspect, it kind of left me disappointed. But at the same time, uh, it was a good game, and I I didn't 100% it like I did the last Tomb Raider game uh, just because I missed a couple of the trophies. And when I went back and, and looked to see which ones I missed, I was just like, oh, man, I... I, I can't do this. This is just too much of my time, and so did I, I kind of gave up. Did you beat it on what level, easy, medium, or hard? Because, you uh, know, Danny, you're like one of the only pe- pe- persons. I mean, I'm not some crazy gamer, but I, I haven't really gamed a lot in the last couple of years, but I do like a, my occasional Call of Duty. But you're like one of the first people I met that actually told me, like, well, just put it on this level, but I'm like, it's not average. You're like, who, who gives a fuck? So... If you can't beat a level, just fucking go down a level or something. And you're like one of the few people who always like, well, just go to fucking down to the dumb level or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, I think I did beat it on the easy level just because I, I wanted to plow through it. And uh, after, you know, the first couple Who's of levels. Steve Cred's going to get wrecked now, man, huh? Yeah, I know, man. I shouldn't have said that out <laughs> loud. But uh, <laughs> after playing the first couple levels, I was just like, ah, oh, man, I just want to get through this thing. That, that's kind of the feeling that I had throughout the whole game. It was just Nothing like, memorable. yeah, it was kind of like, I, I just want to get this over with because I, I want to beat it. I want to get it over with. But nothing where I was just like, oh, my God, I can't wait until what's the next part. What's the next part that's going to come up after this? Um, The only thing that was kind of cool, and, and I know you're not a super game, Randy, but what was cool is that there's a setting um, in the game, audio, where it lets you play the game in, in different languages. That actually quite a few. Really? I think it was like 12 different languages that you can play this game. Uh, but what was cool is below that, it had uh, leave native speaking languages like default. And I was just like, oh, wow, this is kind of weird. What is this? So I left, I turned it on. I left it so that it could stay default. And Laura Croft, you know, the, the, the player that you play, the, the Tomb Raider chick, She's speaking English, but she would go to like a temple like uh, the, the game is mostly in like Southern America, like in Peru and in that general area. Right. And the people would be speaking Spanish, dude. So you would walk up to like a person and Laura would be like, hey, I need help finding this thing. And then the person would just start speaking Spanish to you. And it was really cool. Um to see that level of immersion with a video game where they would actually speak the native language. And it was something cool that I don't quite remember any other game really doing something like that. But did she reply in Spanish? No, because I had her language to be native. So since she's an American, she would just speak in English. Was there subtitles? Yeah, everything was subtitled. So even though I, I do speak Spanish, um, there are subtitles whenever somebody would speak anything other than English. And, you know, it was, it was pretty spot on. Now there's other characters in the game. There was uh, some characters that were like, you know, a tiro Indio, man. They're like Mayan Indians. <laughs> and so they're, they're speaking whatever their native tongue is, you know, kind of like that Mel Gibson movie. Uh, what the hell is the name of it? The, um, Apocalypto. Apocalypto, like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they were talking like that, like you know, it, it, you know, kind of like in tune with that, you know, kind of vibe. And I was just like, wow, man, this feels authentic. And it was just something that was really cool, and it was a nice little touch that um, I don't recall any of the other Tomb Raiders doing. So uh, I do have a, have to give a props for that. I, I thought that was a very nice touch. Do you feel, I mean, like, um, I mean, it's Tomb Raider, dude. Like, I, to me, there's, that's what I'm saying. Like, when I'm like, man, they're still making this. I, I remember they're making games for this this character. And I remember 
like a while back. There was um, the I don't know. It was the publisher, the creator went bankrupt, and somebody else bought it. And I really right. don't remember them having any new games for the the current consoles. I think the last one I remember maybe was PS3. I don't know. They were still making a one for PS4. Like even that, people were like, "Ah, does this character even belong in these in this in this uh, this current console consoles?" Right, is it still relevant? It was there was like a big debate because even there was like so freaking PS one and PS two, you know. Yeah, I gotta say the the latest games that um that are on right now, like these later current generation, I guess we'll call them. They're they're really well made. Um, in this console generation, PlayStation Four, I believe there've been three uh, games with her in particular. And they're all very well made. Uh, right now, the publisher is Square Enix, but you're right. Um, it was in 2009 that uh, Idols uh, lost the publisher rights to it. And I think they sold it to Square or they went bankrupt, so they sold it. Or I don't know how it worked out. They but, made uh, three games on the PS4 for Tomb Raider? If I recall correctly, I would have to search to see uh, how many were actually on the PlayStation 4. Um but it's got to be like two or three at least. I, I I can't remember. I would have to Google it really quick. But yeah, the 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 ones that I recall playing on PlayStation Four, they were all very well made and, and and really good quality games. Where when you play them, you're just like, wow, this is this is some good stuff, man. Interesting. Yeah, like I said, man. It um as soon as I think of that, I think of PS One uh, PS One. And PS2, and because she had a good run, and now I'm just like I don't even know what makes it. But interesting, I mean. So at the, overall, the, with that being said, I'm you didn't pay full price, so is this like you recommend it, or is it just good nostalgia? And you're like, I'm this is good, like I'm gonna go get my two bucks from GameStop and buy something else. No, I I, I dug it. I, I think it's a good game if you're into that adventure, action adventure kind of game. This is definitely a, a, a good play, especially now uh, that fifteen dollars that I paid it was a Black Friday price, but I think regularly it's like twenty bucks anyways. So it's it's something where you can get it for a, a somewhat valued price, and it's a, a really good game uh, if you're if you're into that genre, the action adventure. So, yeah, kind of recommend it. You guys want to go go check it out for sure. Um, and actually, the other game that I'm playing right now is the the Star Wars game. Um, I'm not sure if you heard me talking about it a little bit, Andy. But I'm playing... Um, shit, the name escapes me now. But the new Star Wars game is for the, the place. Um, the one with the paddle one, right? Or with Darth yeah, Vader? It's it's one of the uh, no, it's not that one. It's it's uh, called Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and it's the new one that came out. Um, very very cool game, and it definitely gives me a different vibe. It was published uh, by Electronic Arts EA, and the developers respawn uh, the people that brought you uh, Titanfall one and two, and they came out with like a yeah Fallen Order. Yeah, they came out with one of those like Fortnite clone copy games as well so respawn is a, a pretty uh good developer but yeah they came out with this uh star wars jedi fallen order and man this has like a different feeling than tomb raider it gives me that feeling that man i can't wait to play the next mission so i could see what's the next part um i don't know if it's because it's star wars or um or what it is, but it definitely gives me a different vibe than what Tomb Raider gave me. So, yeah, and IGN.com, they give it a 9 out of 10. Metacritic is at 80. Uh, PC Gamer is uh, 73%. And so it looks like it has some uh, uh, better than average reviews. I mean, I, out of all those three, I think I would trust IGN more. But Metacritic is, eh, and PC Gamer, I don't know. But, uh People overall seem to like it, man. And uh, Steam has it at 9 out of 10, and GameStop, 
four and a half out of five. Yeah, so, I, I did I, see the trailers and stuff. I mean, like I said, uh, it looks cool. Yeah, it's it's something where the the graphics look really like next gen. I mean, it's using the Unreal Engine four, so uh, it's looks really sharp and it looks like like something new gen that when you see it you're like wow this is this is nice man this is a nice video game and it's really got me hooked man i i I try to play it as often as i can but you know i i don't usually game over life so it's not something that you know i need to play like hey andy i can't record this podcast because i just got to play jedi fallen order but if it wasn't for my if you did, <laughs> right, if it wasn't for my responsibilities, I'd be playing it right now. Uh, that's that's how good of a feeling it gives me just to keep playing it. And I, I guess what's even more exciting is that there's still more to come. I believe I'm only at the start of it, and I've played it for maybe like a three four days, and it's something that where I'm just like, man, I I, I just want more. I want more. I want to get back to it. Um, the, some of the negatives that I kind of found so far in it, and like I uh-huh. said, I'm just barely into it, is the performance. I was kind of disappointed that the like the frame rate dips a lot. Now, granted, like I mentioned, it's it's like really graphically intense. I mean, there's like a lot of particle effects, and just the character models look great. Some of the draw distance is really good, but it just like starts dipping down once you start swinging that uh, lightsaber and start attacking enemies, it sometimes dips down. Um, now, what does that mean, that, that it dips down for, like, your average person who who doesn't game? Is just like, you see pixelation? Is it the dark colors? Or it, it lose some of its uh, sharpness? I mean, what does that mean? And uh, F, uh, it, FPS or frame per second. I mean, some of those, a lot of people, I don't think they're going to know about that. Right, right. Yeah, I guess what I mean is that performance-wise, it dips. It's like you'll notice a slowdown in the gameplay. Uh, Kind of like Mario Brothers Level 2, when you're walking up to that first two guys with the shell, and you kind of see like a stutter step in the frame rate because Uh it wasn't anticipating that graphics or that graphics is too heavy for the Super Nintendo, so it kind of like stutter steps for a second. Um Maybe normal or you know regular people don't don't see it as easily, but if you're paying attention, you'll see that stutter step. And this game has quite a few of it. Um, it its performance is pretty bad. And after I noticed it, I was just like, "Man, is this just me?" So I googled it, and it looks like it's kind of widespread that this is a, a common uh, complaint of the game, and really the only complaint because, like you said, it's it's got really pretty half decent to great reviews. So it's something where people have complained about the performance. Is now, that because you're you have the PS4 compared to the the Xbox One, or is it on both consoles? I I if I remember correct, it's on both uh, the Xbox and the PlayStation. The issues I don't I didn't read too many PC people having issues, and I think that's just more because you're you could customize your computer settings to run more normally. Uh, to to what kind of you know motherboard and all that you know processor you have, so you could kind of adjust the settings and where the PlayStation and the Xbox it's one setting for all. Uh, it, well, I kind of lie. It, it, you can adjust the settings, but only for the uh, PlayStation the Pro. Pro and the Xbox One Elite or whatever the hell they call their like premium uh, Xbox. So I did. Uh, that was one of the things because at first I'm like, let me. Uh, there's a switch that you can toggle for a PlayStation Pro to either uh-huh. give you better performance or to give you better graphics. And of course, I'm a graphics whore, so I changed it to graphics. I'm like, this I want that fucking popping. I like, I want that 4K. You know, give me that 4K graphic. And once I noticed the issues, I googled performance, blah blah blah, and one of the recommendations for PlayStation Pro users is to switch it to performance and it should stabilize the the, the frame rate a little better. And I got to say, after I did that, it's still stutter steps here and there, but it's not as frequent as it was when I, when I had it on the uh, 4K, 
4K graphics settings. So um, that that's probably my only knock on it so far. But like I mentioned, I'm kind of early on it. I haven't really dug too much into it, but I'm really digging it, man. I'm really liking it uh, a ton more than the uh, the Tomb Raider game that I just finished. Yeah, I know. I I seen the commercials. There was a lot of hype on it. Usually, the the last couple of Star Wars games have have kind of disappointed. Right. Or the one, the last one I called the Battlefront Two, I think. And um, so interesting. I mean, it's uh, yeah. Let us know when you when when you uh, when you finish it up. Uh, what happens at the end? Right. Right. No, I want to have to definitely um, give you an update after I finish beating it. Uh, the other cool part about it is that this is kind of after uh, episode three from the prequels. So it's after Anakin goes nuts and, and kills off all the, the little kids, the little, I forget what they call them. The Padawans? Uh, well, the Padawans are the people that are under the master, but I thought they had a special name for the kids. Yeah, the, uh, they're all young Padawans being trained. Oh, okay. I thought they had some like... Uh, Tiddly wings. I forgot what the hell their name was. <laughs> yes, he uh, killed all the tiddly wings, everyone. Yeah, I, f- I forget their name, but I thought they had like some weird name. But anyways, this is right after that. So this character that you're playing, and I don't think this is too much of a spoiler because it happens within the first five minutes, is that uh, you're playing a character that survived from that onslaught. So he w- was somewhere else he wasn't there he like traveled somewhere else and then the the whole uh order 59 or 69 or what was the order that the the droids or the the clone guys i forget the order that they did that yeah um, i know what you're talking about i can't think of the name though right now right there's like a order number that they were given to to kill all the jedi well this character that you're playing in the video game he survived that so anyways pretty cool i'll i'll definitely give an update as soon as i beat it but definitely enjoying myself so far uh the only other thing quick andy uh not too much to this but do you usually leave your car running when you're driving to somewhere like you're stopping by 7-eleven and i know you're not drinking pop anymore or even beer for that fact but do you usually leave your car running as you run into like these quick convenience stores or run into a gas station are you one of those people that leave it running? No, I don't trust that shit, man. There you go. I, I turn it off because uh, I don't know. My dad never left it on. I don't leave it on. Uh, I don't like leaving the car on when I'm pumping gas or any of that shit. I did it for like a little bit on my old uh, S10, and I had to re uh, replace my fuel pump on that. So I'm like, I'm not doing that stupid shit no more. Right. Not only because of that, when you're pumping gas, because you're you're letting oxygen get into your fuel tank. But it, to me, I just think it's idiotic. I can't understand people that do this. But uh, sometimes I'll stop by um, Thornton's and go get, a, you know, an unsweetened iced tea in the morning. And, dude, it does not fail. There's always one or two cars parked there with their car running and people ran into the store. And I'm just thinking, like, these are the people that are on the news complaining about how their car got stolen. <laughs> and it's like it, you can't make it any easier for you. You might as well just leave the door ajar and just leave it open so that anybody could just run into your car and just take off. Um, it, it, you hear about it more and more. I think it was yeah, like a month ago. I think they, even police people tell you not to do that. They put out, like, safety bulletins and stuff on community groups and blogs that, don't leave your car running on, and uh, you know while you're in a public place. They don't even recommend it for your house, like your driveway. Right. Yeah, I even read that, but for that, I'm a little more cool because my car is locked. When I use my remote start, um, I, my car is locked, so there's there's no way anybody's gonna jump into my car unless they break the window. And even then, since I have remote start, uh, as soon as you press the gas pedal or the brake or even switch the gear. The car turns off. It's set up to do that. But these people, you know, they just pull up into, you know, whatever, Thornton's, and they just jump out of the car, go in and get their shit. And like I was mentioning, I think it was like a a month ago or so, I read that a parent 
jumped out of their car with their kids in the back, went to Little Caesars to pick up like a pizza. And by the time he came out, somebody had stolen their car and drove in their kids like five blocks down the road. And so finally they noticed that the kids were in the back and they dumped the kids off on the side and then took off with the car again. I so, think you, you should teach these people a lesson and just jump in the car and drive away then. I, you know, if it wasn't for my news resolution of trying to be a better person, <laughs> I probably would, Andy. But uh, yeah, man, it 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 just boggles my mind, man. It's like the simplest shit you can do to to keep your car safe, and, and I I just don't get it, man. I don't know what kind of animal would do this, man. <laughs> man animals? <laughs> I don't know what to call it, man. But it's, it's uh, like I wouldn't do it. I've never done it. I mean, like you said, I've seen posts and uh, blogs from police and all this not to do it. Um, so I, I, I don't know. I don't recommend it. I, uh, I'm not into it. But Danny, if this bothers you so much where you call these people animals, I, I suggest you just get on the car and just drive away and then just walk back and just fucking get in your car. Make sure it's locked before you do this so you can teach these people a lesson. Damn right, man. Somebody's got to. Uh, <laughs> does your wife by any chance do this? No, we do have on her vehicle, we do have the remote start. So when we had the polar vortex about a year ago, uh, me being the paranoid asshole that I am, I would turn on her truck. I would wake up like around uh, 2 in the morning, turn on her truck with the remote start. Then I would run out there to my truck in the pajamas. And fucking turn on the truck, and I'll be in my truck for like five minutes, and her truck will shut off after fifteen, and I just run back because I didn't want nothing to freeze, or I didn't want to be struggling to uh, not be able to turn on the car when we had like fucking thirty below or twenty below degree weather, below zero. Right, right, and even for that, I read an article not too long ago. I think it was uh, actually like a couple days ago that said something that with these new fuel injector cars the the newer generation stuff uh it's even bad to kind of warm up the car that they're designed and and made in in a way that you know since they're not carburetor anymore you you don't have to warm up in that same fashion but i'm with you i'm still i'm like my dad I, i still warm up my car during the winter but uh only if it's been outside so like uh like this more like this today when i left work as i'm walking to the bathroom to wash up or whatever i hit that remote start wash my hands grab my my stuff and i walk out so it's been on for like you know three minutes or whatever but i figured you know hey three minutes can't hurt it and it's you know got to be something that that yeah. does it a little bit of good because i growing up i mean like i grew up in, in in the community in my in my old neighborhood when it get really cold, I saw people out there with the the carburetors out and the fucking spray to try to get cars going. That was ingrained in my mind. I'm like, right. right, this fucking sucks. I gotta go help my dad, and it's like fucking zero or fucking five degrees trying to get the car going. Right. And you see the whole fucking block just they're trying to turn on cars, and that one guy got the tar car going and. There were fucking people spraying down all this shit, like with the the, I don't remember what the name of it's the the igniter spray thing, and then right, the car, carb, all this black smoke right. would come out, and people were like yeah, and then like they would let they wouldn't let the car they wouldn't shut off the car no more, you know, and like and that's ingrained in my head, so that's why like I don't want to be that guy, right, and that and that's just the life in in Illinois here with this crappy weather sometimes, and it's the kind of things that we have to put up with. And that kind of leads us into our article of the week. So, Andy, our article for this week, uh, like we were talking about living in Illinois, Illinois, man, it started in the new year, started selling marijuana, like we've mentioned in a couple podcasts before. And I was surprised but not too surprised to see 3.2 million dollars made in the state of illinois on its first day of selling at dispensaries i was just like holy shit i couldn't believe it man when i saw this money count i was kind of 
flabbergasted, if I could use that word, Andy. Uh, so, it looks like 77, 77 plus thousand transactions were made, and the average transaction was two hundred dollars uh, per person. Uh, right now, there are forty, more than forty uh, dispensaries in the state of Illinois, and with another seventy plus stores. Uh, applying for licenses or another 70 plus licenses will be handed out. So it looks like these dispensaries are a hit and people are buying by the gangbusters. So, yeah, with uh, is the day of the recording of this article, I'm sorry, is we recording this episode? Uh, the day I, I researched it because it's about a couple of days old as of yesterday. Um, and uh, of this recording, they sold nearly eleven million dollars, and that's an uh, that's an article that they have on NBC Chicago, and so it's business is booming. And like you said, in Chicago, they're only issuing a certain amount of licenses uh, for these dispensaries, and what happens is they're only having to allow seventy five new licenses and they're letting people sign, uh, try to apply to get the license and if they're approved they put them in a fucking lottery right and you're hoping you could get that so you could open your business so to me that sounds very uh uh chicago-ish i'm pretty sure some people are gonna win by taking care of certain people but i know out in the suburbs there's certain towns where um cities are like we're not selling weed um, we're not cool with this, um, like in Naperville, but the neighboring town to Naperville is Aurora and they're like, oh yeah, Naperville don't got weed, but we got a shitload of weed and just drive right on over. So right. some communities are embracing it. Others are not, um, which is good to me if it's the, if a community decides they don't want it. I mean, good for them. I mean, I, I'm a big proponent to, uh, community choices and what that community likes. Um, but uh, it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's marijuana. It's, we all know the effects and what not. And we all know it, throughout the years, it's been propagandized as bad for you, but we know better. They use it for medicine. But now uh, I saw a lot of memes and one of them was, what do you do when the state, when you're broke, you sell drugs. And I, I think the state's, uh, they're, turn, they're trying to do a cash grab because you, you see the receipts started trickling out, what, what kind of tax they're charging some of this stuff, and it's, like, ridiculous. Right, yeah, speaking of receipts, I got a couple copies of some that people posted online. Uh, this one's from a... Uh, then or from online, you know? No, no, these are online. I, I myself, <laughs> uh, even though weed is Say legal, no, say no to drugs. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't inhale. Oh, shit. Uh, this is uh, from Chicago. No? <laughs> <laughs> That's for another podcast. Uh-huh. Uh, this was from Chicago, Illinois, uh, a weed center there. This guy spent $130 subtotal, and the recreational sales tax was just a little over $13, so over uh, a little more than 10% uh, was the recreational tax. The Illinois, or I'm sorry, it says rec sales tax so i'm not sure what that stands for but rec sales tax and the next line was illinois recreational tax and that is greater than 35 percent it says here so that came out to a total of 32 dollars and 50 cents uh for a grand total I feel of that t- other one is like a local municipality or county and then there's the one for the state yeah that's what i'm thinking uh, the other really weird thing about this is, uh, from what I was reading, they're only accepting cash for these transactions. No, <laughs> no credit cards are being accepted. Everything has to be cash, and I think Man, it's, I, I think it's that. their, I think it's their way to get around paying Visa a certain percentage, especially because the taxes are so high. It just means more money in their pockets. I, so, I feel that's probably like a, a legality issue with the federal government. It you might know, be federal is still you can't um, weed is illegal through the federal, but locally some states. And I feel like them the the technically their banks they probably might lose out lose out on some uh, um, 
government benefits from the feds. So I think that's one of the reasons they're not doing that. It is not. Come on, dude. We're basically a cashless society. It's easier to just go in and out with the card, even though you get fraud like I did. <laughs> then right. Because cash, cash is when it's all said and done. I mean, it's it's it's. It's people. If there's, I mean, if you saw the New Year's Day's videos, all these long lines at all these dispensaries. It, it, I mean, there's a chance someone who's smart might just go up there and just jack everyone, <laughs> you know? Right. So, no, I think I you didn't are know right. That, I didn't know that you, it was only cash only. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, if I remember right, the the article I did read uh, did make mention of that. I forgot about it, but something to the fact of federal law, and because they're the credit cards are backed by that uh, FICA or whatever the, yes, the bank. The so FICA it's something, it's something yeah. on the federal end that no, you can't I'm use assuming. it. Yeah. Right. They're hoping to to get around it. And uh, the article did make mention that the uh, Illinois states is trying to uh, fill out some forms or do some things with the, the federal end of it to try to at least soon allow you to use credit cards. Um, the other thing I... I heard was there was a couple issues day one with um, because I guess you got to They got to enter your data into like this um, Illinois store database. Uh, So I'm not I'm yeah, I'm not really sure what they're using this database for if they're doing like background checks or what are they doing? But they do register your name in this this database. And there was a computer issue where it was not registering people the correct way. So it made it to where people that had not purchased weed before January 1st were having issues and they were limited to only like uh, edibles or something. They couldn't buy like weed, weed. And so I I heard that that's been cleared up. It was only like a day one issue for the 1st of January, but it's just weird how it came to light that you're being put into some database to be cataloged that you, you, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really kind of scary, but at the same time, people are like, "Screw it, man! It's weed, man! Uh, I'm gonna buy it. I don't care." And you know, they kind of do that stuff for other things. Like, uh, I don't know, when was the last time you bought fireworks? That's why you need to, uh, especially younger people. I mean, we're old, Danny, but look, think about that. They're putting your name in some registration right now. You don't, you're not thinking about down the road when you go apply or. Um, somehow someone's going to get access to this or you go apply for a federal job, you know, uh, where weed currently is still illegal. Um, they're going to have a record of you buying weed and they're going to try to, I'm guessing, entrap you or something like, well, have you ever smoked weed? Oh, uh, no. What well, says here you bought some back like 10 fucking years ago. Your name's on this registry in Illinois. Oh, uh, oh yeah, I forgot. And then they, right away they're going to, from that little fucking bullshit, they might try to fuck you over and not give you a job. Or it uh, says here that this and that is just another way to, entra- I feel like, to tr- mess people up, as I call it. Because it's being registered, it's being stored, all this shit that, oh, we just deleted after an hour. Like, it's all bullshit. It's stored somewhere and someone's going to have access access for it forever. Yeah, like I our remember. podcast. It's going to go on forever. We might not <laughs> own it. It's going to be some some guy might be uploading it 30 years from now. We don't know. Yeah, uh, it, it's kind of like the airports when they would do the body scans and they're yeah. like, yeah, we delete it right away. And then uh, videos and pictures start coming out of, you know, junk shots of, of uh, these people scanning and, you know, coming up on the Internet. And I was just like, I thought they deleted all this shit. And I, I guess they had a tighten security on um, the digital footprint. And right. All this crap. And, and maybe the same thing's going to happen with this. But, yeah, it. It did leave me kind of like, I don't know about this, but at the same time, like I was mentioning the fireworks, when I drive to Wisconsin or even Indiana, they make you scan your license and then they put you into a database that you're buying fireworks. And I'm not sure if it's used for the same purposes as marijuana, but it kind of gave me that feeling when I heard about this. No, yeah, dude, it's just, I mean... The paranoid conspiracy nut is coming out on me, but it is, um, they, it's just a record, man. And, and people think, ah, oh, no one's going to remember. They always fucking remember. 
all those tweets, the post. So they're going to know, oh, if he bought weed, I mean, 99% sure he's buying it to for him to smoke. Again, right. maybe down the road, the, the marijuanas won't be as crazy or as like people are not going to, it's going to be like nothing. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Um, but to me, good. I mean, good. I mean, we always knew, we always said, uh, well, fuck it. Let's sell it and tax the shit out of it. And they're making a, a, a shit ton of money on it. It's just going to be interesting seeing how long before it goes bust. Because I feel like it's in a bubble. Because it's like a new thing. And and uh, everybody um, wants it. And it's legal. But down the road, what kind of impact is this going to have on individuals? The corporate world. You know, because every work culture is different. Um, not all companies are like cool with this and nobody is going to just be like, oh yeah, this can be cool. And there's some old school companies are like, we're not, this is not acceptable, blah, blah, blah. So I'm looking at that aspect of it. Um, cause some people are going to think it's like drinking and it's not because once you test positive, it's going to be, have different implications on your, on your career and work life. But if you work with certain companies or you choose a, a specific career path and nobody's thinking about that or talking about that. Yeah, I, th- I think you're right. It's something to really ponder as for the future of this. But uh, I even read that some dispensaries ran out of weed. That's how much they were selling. So it brings, <laughs> uh, it brings the, the, the most important question, Andy, after making 11 or so million in the in this week or so what do you think how is this going to impact the state of illinois is is it going to be business as usual we're always going to be broke here in this state or is this finally the thing that's going to make this state uh, become profitable again and be able to have a balanced budget the 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 whole point is to have a balanced budget right Right. it's in our freaking constitution i mean i don't want to bore people with political talk but but the problem the problem the state has is not an income uh tax problem because we know I mean we bitch about it here just about every time we're on about how much we're taxed in this fucking state and I was reading about how Illinois shrunk again Uh, people are leaving the state because one it's expensive two you're taxed to death three there's less services and yet you pay more and then there's the other thing is there's a lot of stupid taxes like internet tax like I'm a bit I sell stuff on eBay so right away I buy and sell on eBay and I bought something on January 1st and I noticed there was a sales tax by the state. I'm like, well, how can this be? This person's not in the state. They passed a law saying uh, if you do any purchases on eBay, Etsy, the marketplaces where you, they, the state will charge a six and a quarter percent interest rate or uh, sales tax um, no matter if you if they're not within the state so there's like a little loophole closed and then when i sell stuff on certain other states charge me a sales tax too and they take it out of my cut or as like an income tax and it is what i've seen it's like four percent so it's just becoming hard and like i said the the problem is not where they they're they're taking in money is they have a fucking spending problem and shit still and you can see everything's not right with the state because they just keep making it more and more expensive. And then where the best part, you know, is where they're having issues, they create new taxes on stupid shit. And, you know, and people, it's going to come to a point where I, I think people, the state of Illinois and the, the people here are just tired of it. And they're like, it's not even worth fighting. Let's just fucking leave. And they're going to Wisconsin and Indiana mostly. Um and or Tennessee is the other big one because the cost of living is cheaper and they have just as the same as much as stuff except the same amount of uh, amenities and it's cheaper and they're like I can still drive to Chicago if I ever want to visit or see things in Chicago go see a sports whatever um, and I'm only like an hour away if that right yeah I you know I don't think anybody's going to disagree with you. It's the state of Illinois has a spending issue. So I'm, I'm, my gut feeling is that even though they got 11 plus million or whatever it was, 
it's just going to be somebody's going to be getting bonuses rather than them going like, oh, let's pay these bills and let's pay off this and let's, you know, balance uh, this and, and start working on becoming more uh, financially stable in, in, you know, five, ten years with this new, you know, massive amount of income that they're receiving that they didn't previously get in the state. I mean, are you for it, Danny? I mean, I wish Noel was here. He's a little bit under the weather this week. Um, cause I, I, we know he's a big proponent of it. Um, but I, I don't, I never really got your thoughts on it, Danny. If you think it's uh it's a good thing, bad thing, or we're just being two old grumpy old men, just say to uh, fuck, just drink beer or scotch or liquor, like all of the rest of us used to. I, I mean, I think to each their own. I don't think marijuana is a harmful drug to the point where you're going to go out there robbing and killing for it. So, in that token, I think it's just like, you know, alcohol. Just do it with, be responsible, do it in moderation, and just be a, a responsible adult about it. So if the state of Illinois wants to sell it and charge taxes, I think it's great. I think it'll curb crime uh, somewhat. Uh, but at these prices, it might be cheaper to buy it from a drug dealer, uh, to be honest. So I don't know <laughs> if it's really going to curb crime that much. But I think it's a good thing. I think anything that can give the state of Illinois some income so that they can kind of ease back on some of these taxes, I think, is great. But I, like you mentioned, I'm afraid that taxes are not going to be reduced. They're going to get used no. to the new income, yes. and they're just going to spend more instead of cutting back. But what would be interesting to know is if they kept, if they're going to keep the dispensaries or the state somehow was able to keep data of who's buying, where, uh, what's their income, where are they from, if even possible, if they could find out if they're minority or something else, you know, what type of culture or race, ethnicity, because this is all information I'm pretty sure that could be spun in either way you want, because everybody's assuming it's a certain type of people, but I think if they could get that type of metrics, uh, it'd be interesting. That'd be an interest, interesting fucking read because I feel it's gonna be across the board, and you're gonna see some shocking uh, numbers that would pop out of that. I think even uh, a little more nuts than that, Andy. They can sell it. They can sell it to advertising firms and be like, "Here is a demographic of people that yeah. buy it. This is where they live." This is uh, the percentages, da, da, da. Yeah. And so how much they spend per, data, per every time they go. Data and metrics is money now, man. That advertising money, the, the data of the population, all that stuff is money. So who knows, man? Who knows what's what's uh, coming in the future? But I could tell you what's coming right now, Andy. It's the end of this podcast. Uh, we we got to get out of here. We'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, send in those questions to ffnquestions at gmail.com. Let us know if you leave your car running while you run into the grocery store. Give us your um, uh, uh, how it was when you went to the dispensary. Tell us uh, what was your experience. Uh, Facebook and Twitter is at Freeform Network. Visit our webpage, freeformnetwork.podbean.com. Hit that like and subscribe button wherever you're going, whatever uh, services you use. We really appreciate it. It helps us out our our numbers, and we do see it. We see it every time people do it, so we do appreciate that. But for Daniel and my other host, Andy. Uh, I'm the one that gave out Order 66, Andy. All right, Order 66. Going to off all these Jedis for Daniel. Uh, Great talking to you all, you guys. Uh, Have a great New Year's, and we will see you next time. That was cool, Dad.